Ja.
social problems in the wider world. People understand that. How else could our movement have turned out three quarters of a million people on a march in the streets of London in, uh, on March the 26th for justice and for an economic alternative? Tens of thousands of those people, maybe more, are not members of trade unions, but they recognise that we are the main force standing for a better society. The only force able to offer real, practical resistance to the government onslaught on our services and our rights. And every Labour politician should understand that and celebrate it, not be afraid of it. I make that point because once again we're facing an unnecessary debate about the trade union role in the Labour Party. That's not what people want to hear. People don't want to know about electoral colleges. They want to know how to pay for their kids in college. Although, let me say this, I want to make it clear that I want a vibrant, stronger, more democratic Labour Party with thousands more members, with stronger roots in our communities, with an annual conference featuring real debates and decisions open to new influences while proud of our traditions. UNITE does not stand for the status quo, a status quo which let new labour pamper the rich and wage illegal wars without the party being allowed to utter a peep of protest. But one tradition we want to get away from is for way for labour to get back into power is to develop a radical alternative. He has to learn to embrace our values, not by having inward-looking debates on rules, but by being a champion of a campaign, a national campaign, for a clear economic and social alternative. At the moment, we've got several alternatives. There is one alternative being pushed by the Blairite undead, it says we should learn to love the cuts, push Cameron to be a more radical NHS privatiser and talk tough on immigration. Comrades, that's not our alternative. Our alternative is about curbing the power of finance to control our lives, about rebalancing our economy with the state taking the lead where it needs to. Just look what's happening in Derby. Bombardier workers are victims of the lack of an industrial policy and support for manufacturing. The jobs cuts there can't be blamed on the European Union. France and Germany are subject to the same rules, but they would never, never allow key industries to go to the wall and unite pledges to fight to save this factory and will back its workforce in whatever action they want to take, whether that be demonstrations in Derby, pressure in Parliament or strikes and sit-ins. Not just support from Unite, but, for, but, but believe, I believe support from the wider community who are disgusted by the official indifference to our industrial future. That's what our alternative is about. It's about making certain that manufacturing matters, in particular promoting green manufacture. It's about cracking down on tax avoidance. £40 billion a year is lost to the Treasury, lost to us by the greedy, cheating corporate giants. Our alternative is putting a stop to the job-destroying foreign takeovers of our firms. Our nations have had a UK for sale sign planted over them for the last 30 years. It's been like a car boot sale. Come on in and take what you want, and they have. And they've left in their way devastation to our communities. Our alternative is investing in our infrastructure and boosting jobs as we do and making a priority of tackling inequality which scars our society and condemns millions of our children to a life that's limited in hope and opportunity 
from the moment that they are born. In our hearts, it's a flame not just of resistance and of fighting back. It is a spirit of collectivism, a spirit of socialism that says more than simply stop the cuts. That says it is not just the banks that are bankrupt, but the whole capitalist elite that is bankrupt. That says away with the Murdochs and the Fred the Shreds. That says it's time that ordinary people of Britain took control of their own destiny and their own future. A future of equality, justice and peace. Standing here today, comrades, I am looking at that future. And I salute the Durham miners and their communities for continuing to give all of us such as inspiration. Thank you for being here, comrades. And all the experience of Orgrieve a couple of years before, and they were looking for the culprits, but I managed to get on the Tower Hill underground in time. <laughs> Thank God we haven't got a mobile camera. That's another thing, I'm not on the list. I've never had a mobile phone. I've never had a credit card. I've not got a pager. The whips can't find me. <laughs> to survive without instant gratification. I'm not to blame for bringing the economic crisis at all. <laughs> now it's been quite properly said where that comes from and it's in the bankers banking fraternity and that's why we have to make sure that when we get back into power we put them in the place instead of then being able to run amok. They have to be surrounded by regulation and red tape to make sure that they have to understand what it's like for workers who have to abide by regulations. And we have to make sure that we stop this B Sky B takeover. I've never been in bed with that gang. I'm pleased to say, I think they've been after me, but believe me, I think now we should understand, we're not dealing with a giant anymore. Isn't it obvious the man's been diminished this very week? And when you get them on the run, you've got to kick them as far as you can get them. This man owns 40% of the print media. He's got the second biggest television outfit in Britain. He's. Thanks very much. Just to give you an idea. Thank you. So we can write something like that, that would be great. Thank you.